Hey everyone, Shane Lane, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna be opening up a box of OP8. Now, <laughs> I know if you saw my Instagram, I bought an OP7 box, but I was comparing the two boxes here and I feel like this is probably the better value cards because a lot of the cards in there are like more expensive than than OP7, believe it or not. So just comparing the two, I feel like this is a better value and it's cheaper at about $80, which is crazy. But <laughs> We're gonna see if we can get a manga rare. This one, I have, we have been pulling pretty good on OPA. So let's let's continue to trend and get a Rayleigh. <laughs> All right, guys, and we're back. So before we start, I do have a giveaway. Today's giveaway is going to be a couple of super rares I got from OP5. Here they are. They're the Luchi. Oh, that doesn't. That's that shade right there. And you got the Eustace Kid, Sabo, Pika, Pika, <laughs> Inaru, and a Trafalgar Law. You guys know what to do. You know, it's going to pop up on the screen. So don't forget to do that. Anyways, guys, um, I was pretty excited about this box. This was, uh, especially when I picked it out of a fresh case. Um, Oh, I gotta stop doing that and looking at the back. So here we go. Can we get a, a Rayleigh? That'd be awesome. You know what other card I want in here is, uh, so we pulled an SP uh, pudding and then as you guys didn't see it on camera, but I got another SP Bonnie, which I kind of regret not recording, but uh, <laughs> hopefully we can finish off the set. Well, and maybe get a gecko moria that'd be amazing so no first pack magic today i think that's totally fine but anyways guys so on wednesday i wish i would have in hindsight i should have got this for content um uh, but i didn't like you know like a dummy i am but I'm still i'm still so new to this that uh it didn't dawn to me like it was a great idea but anyways this is what i did so i told i went to frankincense i talked to a bunch of vendors right asking them like just telling them my story like hey i'm thinking about opening up a you know just becoming a vendor should i start a show should i do this should i do this? oh my god dude we got an sp sick i'm telling you bro this is <laughs> yeah we oh we got a queen ah oh, man that's great i i feel fantastic so i don't think that we're gonna get a manga rare which, uh, yeah, I guess it's fine. This that pretty much is paid for the whole box. Uh, I'm feeling fantastic right now. But anyways, guys, let's continue on with the uh, segment for today, which is um, ooh, a dog card, which is vending, I guess. So I told them like, hey, I'm starting to vend. Like, can you provide me certain strategies on what I need to do? Um, pretty much is I I really wanted to just shadow one of them for the whole day and just see how they're daily schedule looks but they you know they they won't really do that with you but <laughs> but i mentioned it before and then they just they just laughed at it um but pretty much they said it's, it's like you're gonna be very busy if you don't like trading cards like you do which i love trading cards i i don't mind selling it because i do sell i do have a tcg storefront link in a link below um just if you guys are interested in some of the stuff i have but it's just that it's <laughs> If this box is it, it's gonna be like I just need one more thing and then it's it's a dead box you know what I'm saying like one more alternate art and then it's just whatever you know what I mean <laughs> that's crazy uh, I mean I, I think the SP is a bonus right it is like they were saying if you don't like trading cards then I they, you don't even this is another Dawn card wow we're getting all the hits are like on the top what the what's going on um, <laughs> Them, but they're talking about how busy they were. I was like, do you guys still play competitively or as a hobby? He's like, no, we really don't play. It just doesn't have time for it. But then like another vendor I asked, he's like, yeah, well, he, <laughs> they play magic at like a Denny's and he keeps like, yeah, you should get into magic. You should, you should go to Denny's and play with us. So he's trying to recruit more people to play. And I go to his booth like all the time and he's super busy at that booth. I wish I, I wish, okay, cool. I wish I had taken like photos or videos of this whole experience because maybe I'm doing a bad job telling it, but um, pretty much it was just picking their brains on what kind of strategies or how their daily schedules are. Some of them are busy. Like when, when that other guy's there who tries to play me for magic, like when he's there, he's like busy, busy. So he works 10 times faster when he's there and then he makes time for magic so i think that's the problem with the other guy because he was like more relaxed um you know just going about his day 
uh, you know, taking up one thing at a time. But the first thing he has to do, you know, make sales at TCG player. I mean, TCG player. So, and other than that. So, some other strategies they told me if you guys are vending. TCG player is probably the best start because it's like the hub if you want to sell cards, right? But um, <clears throat> after TCG player, they take a certain percentage. So, I figured, I did some math and I figured around $35 and above, that's when you start making about 75% of the card's value. Uh, that's including the shipping, I think. If, if my math is off, then, you know, let me know. But, you know, considering that shipping is about, let's say, five bucks, um, with tracking, because you, there's, you know, there's some people on TCG Player who, who claims they, they're missing cards. <gasps> Chopper! Um, but the, who claims they're missing cards, and you just, you just don't want to deal with that, especially with, like, a $35 card or something. So you definitely want to just say... You, just, you definitely want to ship it with tracking so you can't claim they miss it. And plus, on top of that, once you have tracking on it, TCG Player will reimburse you that money uh, that you that you had. So, even if it is lost, you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> you have to be wary of that. And um, what is going on with my phone? Here we go. And, okay, that's hot. So, that's pretty much the gist of it. Um, TCG Player, that's the main thing. It's the main place for, like, for them to sell. Uh, the second place is eBay, believe it or not, because eBay is like more of a, a retail storefront. Uh, if you think about it, because you're just listing stuff up there, it's kind of like TCG Player, but people would rather be on eBay for some reason. They, they buy it more expensive on eBay, which maybe because it's more normal people buying it for like their kids or something, uh, or, or like you know adults buying it for somebody else. Uh, you know, if if they if you hear a mention of somebody wants to buy a card, you just go on eBay or or somewhere else. Ooh, bunny go somewhere else to um you know buy the card so ebay is probably like another platform kind of considering of amazon but amazon's always going to be more expensive because i found out that amazon charges like an arm and a leg for like percentage because you know it all varies on the price of the card so um for example on tcg player i can sell something for uh, a penny right and then tcg player will take away about 50 cents which is higher than like, um, then like you know, 75, 80 percent. So you don't really make any money if you sell something for like a penny on TCG Player. Uh, same thing goes with like when you sell things a little higher. So for example, five bucks they take about like a dollar twenty-seven or something like that. And then once you hit to like thirty, once you hit to like thirty dollars, then it starts being like seventy percent taken away, and that's including shipping. And then. Uh, 35 is like the sweet spot I feel like so that's some strategies there you can use Macari's the same way you just list things on eBay listings on Macari and people will come and buy it if your price is reasonable even though it's higher than TCG player but a normal person wouldn't shop on TCG player you know what I mean so that's some of the things that they, they told me um, some other strategies is whatnot uh, the hardest thing about whatnot is retaining views or getting views so if you're able to build up your brand, like, you know, kind of like slowly, low-key what I'm trying to do, um, you know, then then you can do it that way. And then obviously the guys over there at Frankenton, some of them don't even have a store. Some of them do, um, which is like, they, they're like these guys are making a lot of money just at being at Frank's, but they're like one of the busiest booths there is. So, I mean, they're doing something right. <laughs> So that's pretty awesome to see. So, um, and then another guy who I always, you know, the Gen X Gaming, who I always run into at conventions, uh, he tells me that, you know, sometimes being at uh, a convention sometimes is worth it, but only if, like, you're one of the few people there. Like a normal convention at a Collecticon, if your prices are just better, then you're going to make better business. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's the mainly the gist of it. And then also inventory as well. Um, one of the things they told me is that you always got to have inventory. If you're going to do like online streaming and stuff, you're, you need still a product. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, that's something I'm struggling with because, you know, finding a distributor is hard. But, you know, once you talk to people, um, and, you know, try to network and try to weasel your way. And like, that's literally what I'm doing. I'm talking to a bunch of like vendors to see if I can get better pricing and, you know, better than market pricing. So that way I could just... Maybe crack a case on stream or something, you know what I mean? That's something I definitely want to do in the future. Uh, maybe, you know, hook up my hook up my viewers, like you guys who watch the videos, who uh, 
like you see me open something great like you know the the <laughs> the queen right and i'll hook you guys up you know what i'm saying because right now it's going for 90 dollars. i'll probably let it go for like you know 70 60 depending on how, how good i feel you know what i'm saying that you guys know me i'm always hooking it up but yeah maybe something like that uh if you guys are interested in something make maybe do like a rip and ship on youtube or or like you know whatnot so i'm just, i'm just dabbling around trying to get strategies of what these sellers are doing and um you know just try to use it or mimic it or test out to make it fit my style uh, you know my lifestyle because this is gonna definitely this is definitely a lifestyle of what i'm doing because it's gonna be a new new uh new job for me you know what i'm saying so that is something because i am selling tcg player right now um I'm usually like the lowest one on, <laughs> on any page, so I am making sales. I'm doing great, not too, not too shabby. I'm not gonna lie. So I've been recycling a lot of things. I've been dabbling in a, a lot of other card games. If you can tell, uh, you know, usually I do the big three. Well, not. So here's crazy. Uh, here's something crazy. I asked them like, hey, what do you think are the? I asked these vendors like five of them. What do you think are the big three games right now? And they're like, well, honestly, the big three games for trading cards is Magic the Gathering, Pokemon, and Lorcana. And One Piece is like kind of up there, but Lorcana is actually beating it by a, like a smidge right now. So I'm like, really? They're like, yep, those are the big three right now. And um, I mean, Yu-Gi-Oh, there's always gonna be Yu-Gi-Oh players, but the game is so, they've been telling me like the game is so trash right now that uh, a lot of people are just um, going over to a different game. and. Or the owner of a different game or playing like um an older format hence the reason why there's like a lot of like reprints of like tingu like six samurai stuff like they just reprinted that and now they announced they're gonna reprint uh not reprint but like re introduce more gladiator beast stuff and you know I me mean, gladiator beast has like a sweet spot where i do want to play it uh, it's definitely one of the fun decks I, I like to play so um they just announced it uh they just announced it on Wednesday, so it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be crazy. Here we go, Pedro. Oh, Charlotte Linlin. Okay, this is not the alternate, I believe. I think this is the regular secret rare. But still, we got some pretty good stuff. Um, the rest of the things, yeah, we're just gonna open it. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be anything great. We're just gonna go through it fast. But yeah, those are some strategies you can use. Another, another strategy that I use is that I post a lot of things on, once I get like, Sealed product that I have extra love, extra up, or I have like a certain card that I want to get like full retail value for. Um, I'll try it. Well, not really full because they always lowball you. I do offer up and um, and Craigslist, so I'll, I'll have some listings there. Uh, people meet me up, I sell it to them, so although it's a little dangerous because you never know what can happen, but you know, it is what it is. What I usually do now is that I list it and just I just tell them to meet me at the store. Uh, that's that's the best way to do it and if they can't and it's after hours then then uh, I'll pretty much just I don't know bro it's just <laughs> it's just a little scuffed right now what I'm doing because you know, I'm just trying to make it uh, as a small time guy but hopefully things are working out uh, very soon and I think uh, I might have some news really soon I just don't know yet so here we go yeah I really love this scene um, <clears throat> but that's you know some strategies you can use if you are into selling trading cards, of course, bringing in a binder to like a regional or something is probably another better way because people will buy it off you for like if you're if you're like two bucks cheaper than the vendor, then yeah, you know what I'm saying. People are, you know, it's crazy how how much of a penny pinch people are, uh, especially when it's like compared to like a dollar or two, you know what I'm saying, or maybe like a quarter. You know what I mean? People will buy it if you're if you're slightly less than a vendor. Um, but we have what people don't know, like regular like consumers, like me and you. Uh, I didn't know at first, but like you know, you have to pay a certain percentage when you sell a TCU player. So I'm looking at the market, and you know, I can already see the complaints because if I have like a, let's say I have like a storefront, right, and then um, people just come into my store and they complain about my pricing, it's like I don't know if you can really complain because yeah, the market is says is a quarter but you have to pay a dollar 27 for shipping and you have to wait for it so if i'm charging you just a dollar for a quarter card that's pretty good i feel like because you're getting it there and you get to utilize it and you know it's, it's no way it's gonna get lost in the mail you know what i mean but yeah, yeah i don't know it's just that's just me i've been i've had a few complaints like that already because when i when i tell them my price for a card they're like well it's only 20 i was like bro like 
Yeah, you, like, go, go ahead and buy it online. So anyways, guys, here are today's hit. We got the Kaido and Lin Lin. Mama, mama. We got the Jack. Looking fantastic. And a queen. Oh, man. That's pretty cool. Dude, we have... So out of, like... I got three SP cards already. That's crazy. Uh, here are the Super Rares and the Dawn cards. Nothing really too special. We've seen those already. But it's always the alternate art that gets us pretty cool. This is the first time we've seen these two. That's great. <laughs> so, guys, uh, it's Friday. Hope you guys enjoy your Friday. If you guys want a chance to win these super rares, all you, you know what you got to do. <laughs> um, so, have a great weekend, guys. Uh, so, I'm thinking about, now that you know what the three, the big three is, should I dabble in Lorcana? I don't really feel like it. <laughs> but I do have a, a booster box I've been holding forever. It's just been, I'm looking at it right now. It's just on display. Um definitely don't know what I'm gonna do with that I think I'll just keep it as this play for a long long time and then probably open it up next year or something like that maybe maybe it'll it'll increase in value or something like that. you know how we do you know hold to the moon baby <laughs> uh, other than that guys I think on Monday we might do another one piece I'm hoping to get a rage of a rage of a best box at work um, I'll let you guys know just follow me on Instagram and you'll know if I got another if I if I get another Rage of Abyss booster box I'm gonna like record to show you guys which one I exactly pick out if it's from a fresh case and then uh yeah that way you guys can if you guys ever have an opportunity you guys know which one to go because the last two I've gotten in the same spot it's been fantastic and you guys know that so anyways guys um yeah other than that have a great weekend uh stay out of trouble and you know, just play some more trading cards <laughs> Other than that, see you guys. Laters.